go back in your word again. So we ask, Father, that you will come by here personally. One more time, open up our minds and open up our understanding and teach us all by yourself. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Let the power fall and I. I get the title from that old song years ago. Rastaman used to sing that song. I don't see any Rastaman in Portmore. No bobo. Portmore has only ball head, no Rastaman. But this was a, it was a popular song. You remember that song, right? But it has meaning. It has theological meaning. Let the power fall an eye. I'm going to put a text on the screen. Put a text on the screen. I'm going to ask you to read with me. But, but by the way, this is a very popular text, irrespective of which church you attend. It comes from Acts 2, verses 1 to 4. And the text says, When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all in one accord in one place, uh -huh. and suddenly there came a sound from heaven uh -huh, as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the house where they were sitting. Verse 3 says, then there appeared, what? There appeared to them divided tongues as of fire. And one sat upon each of them, and they were all filled with. Boy, we're back on that subject again. Amen? That's what we worked on last night. And this is almost like a part two. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and they began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Amen. This, my dear brethren, is one of the most important, critical passages of Scripture in your Bible. One of the most important passages of Scripture in our Bible. It is a text that all school children should be able to recite. But many people have not gotten the understanding of it. It's the most misunderstood, misinterpreted text. There are many who associate this text with tongues. And the text has very little to do with tongues. It's not about tongues. It's not about tongues. There's a whole lot more in the text than just tongues. Is the church with me? Yes. Last night we found out that, didn't we? That the Holy Spirit has a whole lot more. What was it? The Holy Spirit was what? Come on, the Holy Spirit was what? Our down payment. What's the Greek word? Let me see the scholars. What's the Greek word? Arabon, precisely, our Arabon, our installment, our down payment on eternity. Are we together? Yes, 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 yes. So they, I want to I wanna, I wanna take the next few minutes to unpack this text for you because it has something to do with you in Portmore tonight. Okay, so let me give you the background to the text. <clears throat> the background to the text came when Jesus made this promise. Okay, we call it the promise. John 14, verse 15 says, if you talk about that last night, here's the promise. If you, by the way, this is the last meeting Jesus had with the disciples before he died. Is the church with me? 
Yes. So in that meeting, he said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Talk about that last night. And I will pray the Father that he will give you what? Another helper that he may abide with you for ever. Right. So Jesus made that promise. If you really love me and are obedient to me, I will pray the Father. He gives you another helper. Another paracletos, another comforter, King James Version says. Are we together? Right. Uh, and then he said, and then verse 17, uh, if you're not too sure who that comforter or that helper it is, verse 17 is the spirit of truth. And notice what the text say, that the Holy Ghost is the spirit of truth. Let me talk to the people online. That the Holy Ghost is the spirit of truth. Truth. So if you have the Holy Ghost, you ought to have. Now we're preaching. Hey, hey, let me talk to you. If you have the Holy Ghost, you must have truth. You can't have Holy Ghost and don't have truth because the Holy Ghost is the spirit of truth. So when you have the Holy Ghost, you know not only do you have truth, but you have a deposit on your soul. Amen? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So, so anybody filled with the Holy Ghost, that Holy Ghost is supposed to lead you into all truth. You can't have the Holy Ghost and in error. Amen. Yeah. Hey, by the way, one of the, one of the biggest problems, one of the biggest, biggest trouble we are in is talk about the multiplicity of churches. Church is a dangerous place. Church, dangerous. Dangerous. Hang on to your seat. The devil is going to use church to fill hell. Church, dangerous. Dangerous, dangerous. <laughs> oh, Lord have mercy. Fast your seatbelt. Because I have a lot to say to you. Church. No wonder Jesus says, take heed that no man deceive you because they will come in my name. Dangerous. Dangerous. The text says, if you have the Holy Ghost, you must have truth because he is the spirit of truth. Amen? Yes, that's, that is clear. That is clear. Whom the world... Watch. Hey, 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 hey. I didn't plan to preach on this text. You know, I was just passing it. But the Spirit says, stop. And I have to be obedient to the Spirit. Here, here, here's it. Here's it. Here, here what Jesus says. Whom the world cannot receive. Huh? Pause, 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 pause. So I'm going to tell you a strange piece of doctrine. Don't stone me. Well, it's a good thing. It's only small stone in the tent. No big stone. No big stone in the tent. <laughs> Uh, oh, some big stone over here. Let me walk over this side. Let me, let, let, I'm going to give a strange piece of doctrine. Jesus says the world cannot receive the Holy Spirit. Ah, uh, you don't get it. So let me put it. Let, here's the doctrine. Headline news. Jesus came to save the whole world. The Holy Spirit didn't come for the world. Aha. Uh -huh. I told, you, I told you, don't stone me. Jesus came as a savior for the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the, whole, but the Holy Spirit don't come for the whole world. Ah, why? The text says, the world cannot receive him. See, 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 see. The Holy Spirit comes only for those who love him and keep it. Hey, 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 the world, the world can't receive him. Are you with me? The text says the word. Why? Because it neither sees him nor know him, but you know him, Jesus says. Amen. You know him for he dwells with you and will be in you. That's what the text says. Are we together? That's one of the differences between Jesus' mission and the mission of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost comes specifically 
to fill those who have made that commitment to Jesus. Hey, the Holy Ghost came to put a down payment and to those who have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ. Are we together? Yeah. Look at the text. Not me make it. It's Jesus says so. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, let me go on. Verse 18. And then Jesus says, I will not leave you orphans. Orphans. The Greek word orphanos. Meaning, I won't leave you. He was actually, this is his parting speech. Before he died. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Meaning, in the form of the Holy Ghost. Are we together? Yeah, we use, some church use Holy Ghost. Some say Holy Spirit. Spirit and ghost is the same thing. Okay. Now, that was the promise Jesus made the Thursday evening before he died. Is the church with me? Yes. Now, after he died, after he died, he spent, after he died and resurrected, he spent 40 days here before he went back home permanently. Are we together? Yeah, the book of, Luke, the book of Acts told us that. On the last day before he ascended, before he was translated, the very last day before, he gathered back the disciples again, and he said this to them. Acts chapter 1, verse four, verses 4 and 5. He says, and the Bible says, And being assembled together with them, he commanded them, Hey, watch this. He commanded them, Help me read. Not to depart the city of Jerusalem. Meaning what? Meaning what? Don't leave Jerusalem. Right? Stay in Jerusalem. But they were to wait for the promise. What's promise? The Holy Spirit. Right? So he told the disciples, he says, guys, don't leave town. And by the way, the reason why the guys, the guys were ready to leave town, you know, because if they just murder their boss, if they murder Jesus, murder, if they can murder Jesus, the disciples are, are, are shaking in their boots. Are we together? They were fearful of, of the terrorists that murder Jesus. If they can murder Jesus, they'll come after them. So they're ready to leave town. And Jesus says, don't leave Jerusalem, amen, but wait for the promise of the father so the king james version say tarry am i right and so a number of churches have looked at that and then carved out a piece of doctrine that says you have to tarry in the church so they go to the church all night to get the holy spirit you have heard of that right yes so, so this, is, this is not what Jesus is saying. Jesus said to the disciples, don't leave Jerusalem until you get the Holy Ghost, right? Stay, wait until the promise of the Father, which he said to you, you have heard from, from me. I'm in verse 5. Here's why you must not leave before you get the Holy Spirit. For John, truly what? See, every time you talk about Holy Spirit, this word has to come in there, you know. John truly baptized you with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Are we together? Which means the disciples were all baptized with water, but they didn't have no spirit. Yes? Yeah, 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 yeah. Stay with me. And the reason why they didn't, it was not something wrong with their baptism. No, the reason why they didn't have the Holy Spirit, because he did not come as yet. Are we together? Yeah, 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 yeah. But remember, remember, just after Jesus resurrected, the Bible says he met them one day and he blew on them. <laughs> Receive ye the Holy Spirit. There was a partial deposit until the day of Pentecost. Is the church with me? Hang on, can we go in somewhere? So it says, John baptized you with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit. How long? Not many days from now. So Jesus says, that Holy Spirit can't come as long as I'm here. So it is expedient for me to go so that he can come. Are we together? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's it. That's the arrangement. It's like a four by one relay. And somebody pass on the last, the la last, which, which leg? You saying bolt run. I don't know. Is it first leg or la last leg? 
You know, you pass on the relay button. Yes. It is expedient for me to go. Because if I don't go, the Holy Spirit can't come. Are we together? So this was the last statement he had with them. Uh, very last statement. Verse 8. Same place in the old room. He says, but you shall... Come on, read me. But when the Holy Spirit come, you shall receive what? Hey, 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 hey. If we limit... Hey, hey, hey. Notice. <laughs> Notice. This is a whole other sermon in here. Yeah, yeah. No matter how many times you baptize, no matter how long you live in the church, you're in the church, right? No matter how long you pray, how much you pray and how much you study and how much you do whatever, uh, you will not get power unless the Holy Ghost is inside of you. But when, when the Holy Ghost takes up residence in your soul, the things you used to do, you do them no more. Amen? Because there's a no, there's a no power that gives you the, the ability to resist temptation. Amen? So you used to have a weakness for rum, right? Every rum bar usually stop and go home and curse and beat up your wife. But now when the Holy Spirit is in your life, the Holy Spirit don't drink, so you pass rum bar. Amen. You're hooked to ganja and cigarette. When the Holy Spirit takes over your life, Holy Spirit don't smoke. Amen. So he gives you the power to resist that. Are we together? Power. Power. Power to forgive people who trouble you. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Power. Power, power. That's why Holy Spirit comes. It's not just speaking in tongues. It's power to change your life. Yeah. Places you usually go, you go no more because the Holy, Holy Spirit don't go there. Power. And so a lot of people are scared of getting baptized. Pastor, I don't know if I can, if I can live it. No, you can't live it. You're correct, you can't live it. None of us can live it. Amen? Ah, but when you give your heart to the Lord and the Holy Ghost take control of you, then you start to sing, Live out thy life within me, O Jesus, King of kings. Be thou thyself the answer to all my questioning. He gives you power. Power over malice. Power over backbiting. Power, power over addiction. Power. And if you see some of us living straight, it's not we. We can't, we can't even start. We can't even live one day. It is a power. That's why, we, that's why I told you, when you have him, you have a deposit on your soul. Because he keeps you on the straight and narrow. Power. He says, when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, you shall receive, you shall be what? Witnesses. You know why a lot of people don't want to witness? Because their life not straight. And they don't want people to say, all you can talk to me. So they, they don't bother with no witness. <laughs> Let me tell you, there is no perfect human being down here. Are you with me? When you give your heart to the Lord. Hey, hey, hey. hey uh, uh, you were a murderer. But when the Holy Spirit take over you. You become a witness for Jesus. And when people say. Hey, hey. How you, how you, how you turn Christian. And, and, and you tell them. You, what, you know what Paul told, him, told the guys? Paul says. I am pressing towards the high mark. Of the high calling in Jesus. Yeah, amen. Amen. I'm putting those things which are behind me. Hey! The stuff that are behind me. Things that don't bring up my past. Just tell me about my future. I, I'm going forward in Jesus' name. Every one of you can be a witness. Well, verse 9. Verse 9. I put verse 9 up there because I want you to understand. It is the last thing Jesus said before he left here. Now when he had spoken these things. Which things? The things we just read a while ago. Which while they watched, he was taken up and a cloud received him out. Last thing he said. Last words out of Jesus' mouth before he translated is that, hey, you will receive power. Let the power fall on I. 
Okay. That was the introduction. Uh, that, was, <laughs> that was the introduction to the sermon. You ready for the sermon now? So, 10 days later, after he left, how many days? 10 days later. He said not many days left, but I check it out. 10 days later, the Holy Spirit arrived. Okay? Um, 10 days later, Acts 2 verse 1 now says, when the day of Pentecost was fully come. What does that mean? Why well, didn't just say, when the day of Pentecost arrived? It was fully come. They were all with one accord in one place. So before you leave here tonight, you need to understand what this means. This Pentecost. Because we like to talk about it. Man, you're a Pentecostal preacher. And we use Pentecost. What is that? So let me help you. Pentecost. Pentecost. To, to give you, let me see if I can help you to understand. This is very important that you understand this. So follow, follow me. Follow me. Very important that you understand. Follow me. To understand Pentecost, you have to understand the society of the Jews at that time. Back then, they didn't have no industrial society where they have factories and offices and, and, and electricity and school. No, no, no. They had a, what we call an agricultural society, agrarian society. Are you with me? Which means everybody farm. Are we together? That's why when you read Bible, people are shepherds. Amen? And they talk about vine and vineyard and branches. Everything in Bible is more agricultural term. So you town people don't have a clue. So, so, so stay with me. Stay, stay, stay with me. Because I need to help you. I need to help you. How many of you grew up in the country? Raise your hand. Country people. Praise the Lord. Portmore full of country people. Full of country people. I tell, I tell Kingston people, if you don't have a country, me serve you. Amen. The society back then was rural. Everybody farm. Is, are you with me? This is important. Muy importante. This is important. Now, in the Jewish society back then, they had two main crops that they survived from. Now, apart from the little backyard garden, but they, they have two main crops. Crop number one was barley, and the other one was wheat. Is the church with me? Yes. yes. So stay with me because I had to go learn up this stuff because I don't know the difference between barley and wheat. I know carrot and cabbage. <laughs> Amen. Sweet potato and yam. We don't plant barley and wheat down here. Anyway, so I had to go study up. Barley, barley is an interesting crop. It goes for a short period of time and when it is ripe, it has to be reaped right away because it's easy to decay, easy to rot. Are you with me? Yes, but that one, that crop comes first, and then after that is the big harvest of the wheat. Is the church with me? Good, 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 good. Barley and wheat. Now, now, so when harvest time comes, the whole society is alive because it means food and money. Is the church with me? Yeah, man, so they have, they have celebration, they have feasts, they have different feasts. For different crops. So stay with me. If you're still, stay with me. Don't let me lose you. Don't let me lose you. So let me go on. So Pentecost really means, fifth, is an adjective which means 50. Right? Five. Pentatush. Pentagon. 50. It represents 50 days between two of these feasts that the Jews normally have. Are you with me? Have I lost anybody? Stay with me because we're going somewhere. Going somewhere. Okay. So there are a number of feasts that the Jews normally have. The first one of them is the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Yes. What's the number one? Uh, only some. You're sleeping. Number one? Feast of Unleavened Bread. The second one they had was the Feast of First Fruits. And they call that Feast of Weeks. Same thing. Feast of First Fruits. Or the Feast of Weeks. You must have come across these in your Bible. Stay with me. 
Stay with me because I'm going somewhere. I'm coming to Portmore. The third one they had is the Passover feast on which Pentecost is now hinged. So you can't find Pentecost unless you find Passover feast. Are we together? Good. Don't let me leave. You guys at the back, are you with me? Good, good, good. So stay with the preacher. Stay with the preacher. So hang on. Let me help you with now. So let's start with the Passover first. Number three. Can we talk, start with the, that one first? Yes. So that Passover really had its beginning in the book of Exodus. So you remember, you remember when, when the, God was about to send the plague to kill all the firstborn. He told Moses that they should get a lamb. Everybody get a lamb and kill it in the evening and put the blood on their doorpost. You remember that? Here's the text. Here's the text. Exodus 12 verse 7. Then they are to take some of the blood and put it on the side of the tops of their door frames of the houses where they eat the lamb. Verse 13. The blood will be a sign for you on the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will. Good, 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 good. So, so every, watch the preacher, watch the preacher. Every year at this particular time, the Jews keep this Passover feast to celebrate how God came through for them. Are we together? Just like how we now have Christmas every year and Easter. Every year at that time, they keep it as a memorial. Are we together? Yes, they have the feast. Um, roast lamb, bitter herbs, and unleavened bread. Okay? Okay. All right, so, so, so that's where that comes from. So we're going to talk about the feast. So stay with the preacher now, stay with the preacher. That's where the Passover feast come from, from way back in, in Exodus. Every year they have it right down till Jesus' days. Good, next thing. So let me give you about the feast. The Passover feast happened on this month. No, 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 stay with me. It's not the car, Nissan. It's Nissan. One S. I think the car has two S's. Am I right? Yeah, yes. Nissan, don't let me lose you. Nissan is the first month in the Jewish calendar. Are we together? Yes, that's like our, our January. Their first month is? The Passover happened every year on the 14th day of every year. Why? Because if you read Exodus, that's what God told Moses. Get the lamb on the 10th day, keep it until the 14th day, kill it in the evening. Are you with me? So the 14th day of this month, every year, they have the Passover. Good. Next one. So that's the Passover. On the 15th day, that's the day after the Passover, on the 15th day, they have the Feast of Unleavened Bread, which means for seven days, they eat only Bread without yeast. Are we together? Yes, that they have the feast of unleavened bread. Okay. And on the 16th day, on the 16th day after Passover, they have what is called, don't miss this, don't miss this. This is important. On the 16th day, they have what is called the sheaf of first fruits. Are you with me? Are you still with me? Yes, yes, yes. In other words, it's the beginning of the barley crop. Hang on, hang on. This is serious. Don't miss it. It's the beginning of the barley crop. So what do they do here? The very first day of the crop, the farmers would go into the crop and they would cut a little bundle of the crop as the first fruits. And what do they do with the first fruits? Give it to God. Are we together? Yes. Yeah, so they would, they, would, they, would, they would wave it. They would wave it to God. And give God thanks for giving them a crop. Are you with me? Some people still do it too. They have the big mango tree. And the first one that right, they carry to church harvest. Are we together? Because you give God the first fruits of your crop as an expression of gratitude. Is the church with me? Good. So that's what they do here on the 16th day of Nisan. They would get the first crop and they tighten a little bundle and they wave it before the Lord. They say, hey, Lord, hey, this is a so the priest. Lift it up and wave it. It, called the, it is called the sheave of wave offering. It's the beginning of the reaping season of the barley. 
Is the church still with me? Yes, 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 yes. Okay. Now, from the 16th day, after they do that, from the 16th day, stay with the preacher, they count seven weeks and one day. How many days in seven weeks? Seven weeks. 49. Seven sevens are? Right. So after the 16th day, they would count seven weeks plus one day. Seven weeks plus a day is what? 50. So I have at the Feast of First Fruits, which is called Pentecost, which is the beginning of the second and last harvest. The wheat harvest. Yes? Everybody good? Anybody drowning? Okay, it's very important that you follow me here. Okay, so let me back this up. So on the 16th day of Nisan is the beginning of the first harvest. Amen? Where they cut the first fruit and they wave it before the Lord and they give God thanks for the harvest that they're about to reap. 50 days later, Right? It's the beginning of the second harvest. That's the day of Pentecost, where again they give God that and they start the reaping of that large, last crop, big crop. Is the church with me? Good. Now I'm going to plug this into the, just a formula. I'm going to plug it into what happens. Okay, come with me now. So this is what it looks like when they're celebrating. Now we're ready for business. Take, take a deep breath. Full your lungs, full up your lungs. Okay, you need oxygen in your brain. And let it out. One more time. And let it out. I hope no of your people here. I was, I was in England doing a campaign, and I asked the Virgin to do that. And when I finished, a man from Africa came and said, Pastor, what kind of spiritism business that you're doing? I said, I didn't know that breathing was a... Up your business. So I hope no obya man troubling you. Are you ready for this now? This is important. No. The year, the year when Jesus died was AD 31. Is the church with me? Good. On, in that year, the day, Nisan 14, which is, which supper is this one? Which feast? Passover, yes man, stay with the preacher. Nisan 14, that the year when Jesus died, Nisan 14 landed on a Friday. That's why we call it, what kind of Friday? Good Friday, right. On that day, Nisan 14th um, landed on a Friday, and so they had the Passover supper. Is the church with me? Good, 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 good. Now, next. On the 15th, on the 15th, the day... After, right, that day, on this, it, it, that would be a Saturday, and some people call it Sabbath. Uh -huh. The Bible call it Sabbath. Bible didn't say, by the way, you notice these days are not in Bible. Friday, Saturday, Sabbath, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. I'm going to tell you why one of these days. But, the, but on the 15th day, it would be the Saturday, and so this is the beginning of the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Good, good, good. Are we good so far? Good. On the 16th day of Nisan, the very next day, that would be which day? Sunday. Yes, on a Sunday. Yeah, very good. On that Sunday, what would they normally do on the 16th day? They would collect the first crop, first little bundle. Am I right? And do what? Wave it to God as thanksgiving for the first fruits. It means that the harvest is now ready to be reaped. Are we together? Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, planting season over. They are now about to reap the harvest for the first crop. Is the church with me? Good, 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 good. Now, so something happened on that Sunday, that weekend when Jesus died. Ah. Ah. The Passover. The lamb that they killed in Exodus was a symbol of Jesus. And that's why Jesus died on the very same day, fulfilling that symbol. Are we together? Good. 
So he died Friday evening, rest on his grave on Sabbath morning. You know, Jesus rest on the Sabbath. So rest on the grave on Sabbath morning. And then he rose on Sunday. But there's something the Bible said that was fascinating. Here's it. Here's it. I'm in Matthew 27, verse 51. Where am I? Where am I? Matthew 27, verse 51. Here's what the text says. Then... Come help me read. Then behold, the veil of the temple was torn. The veil here means the curtain that separates the holy from the most holy. That was ripped in two from where? Top to bottom. And the earth quaked and the rocks were split. By the way, that verse is on the Friday evening when Jesus cried out and gave up the ghost. You remember? Yes, good, good, good. And the verse 52. And the graves were opened. Uh -huh. Hang on, hang on. And then the text says, and then the text says, the, the text says what? Many, how many? Many, many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep. What does it mean by falling asleep? Die. Hey, hey saints, every time the Bible talk about the saints die, they don't use death, they use fall asleep. Because the saints don't die. Why? Because you have Christ inside of you. Hey, you have the resurrector in you. You can't die when the resurrector in you. You fall asleep. So the Bible, so on that Friday, hey, on that Friday, hey, on that Friday evening, when the earth shook and the rock split, my sister, here's what the Bible says happened that Friday evening. It says, many of the bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Because they don't teach you this in Sunday school. Many of the bodies were raised. There's a semicolon. Watch it. This is a Friday evening. Are we together? So here's a shocker. Ready for the shocker? Are you ready for the shocker? Here's it. Next verse. Verse 53. And those bodies that were raised and coming out of the grave. When? After his resurrection. Hang on, preacher, hang on. When did the graves open? When did the graves open? Friday evening. Hey, when were they raised? Friday evening. But when did they get out of the grave? Sunday. You see, they can't get out of the grave before Jesus come up. So even though they were awakened on Friday night, they had to stay there until Jesus come up. You can't come up before Jesus because he's the resurrection and the life. That's what, it, that's what the text says after. <laughs> so they spend Sabbath in the grave. Come we that love the Lord and let our joys be known. And then, <laughs> watch this. And then, and then watch it. So on Sunday, they raise Sunday morning after Jesus raised. Are we together? They raise. It says after his resurrection, come on. And where did they go? Well, they went downtown and drop in at the house. <laughs> Can you imagine you making fried dumpling and codfish and grandma walking? Hey, 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 listen, I, I'm not joking. That's what the text says. The text says they went into the holy city. What's the holy city? Jerusalem. They went into Jerusalem and did what? Appeared to many. Must be a Dapira gunman. I never stopped to look. <laughs> Can you imagine your dead husband? <laughs> yeah, hey, your dead husband died. You married another man. Two of you in the kitchen cooking, and husband walking. You didn't know Bible was so interesting, did you? The te <laughs> oh man, the text says the, te <laughs> the text says they raised after his resurrection. And they appeared unto many, which means they are not ghosts. 
Are you with me? These are not ghosts. So, what happened to them? Did they die again? Oh, Spirit of Prophecy says, when Christ went home, he took all of them up with him. Watch this, watch this, watch this. As what? Come on, as what? First fruits of the resurrection. That's the morning when they wear the first, is the church with me? The morning when they wear the first sheep. That's the first sheep of the resurrection of God's people. The first, which means God has started the reaping of his people. I'm not lying. Here's Paul. Here's Paul. Here's Paul. Here's Paul. First Corinthians 15 verse 20. Read. But now Christ is risen from the dead and has become what? So the harvest has begun. And those that raised that Sunday morning were the sheave, wave sheave. The first fruits of the saints. Are we together? But then now we have a bigger crop. Am I right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> when will that come? When, no, no, no. When, when, when? How, how many, how long from the first crop is a big crop? 50 days. Is the church with me? Yes, yes 50 days. So come on. So 50 days later, 50 days later, here's what happened. Seven weeks plus one day later, seven weeks plus, is the beginning of the first fruits, meaning, meaning the feast of the first fruit, meaning the beginning of the, the wheat harvest. Is the church with me? Yes, yeah, yeah. The, the whole, on that day, on that day, the Holy Spirit arrived. 50 days later, another reaper, one reaper gone, another reaper comes. But this time, this reaper comes to reap the last crop, which is the big crop. Is the church with me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, Jesus says, the field are white and ready for harvest. So now, that's why, that's why when you read Bible, that's why um, Luke who wrote the book of Acts says, when the day of Pentecost was fully come, which means now the 50 days has landed, the Bible says they were all in one accord and uh, suddenly there came a sound from heaven. As a rushing, come on, let me preach. As a what? Rushing, mighty wing. <laughs> and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. This is the arrival of the other member of the Godhead, the last reaper. And the Bible says, and there appeared to them divided tongues as a fire. And uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. like a big ball of fire came into the house, into the house where they were and split off into like a clove of fire and sat on each of them head. The Bible says, and they were what? All filled with the Holy Spirit, which is power. Filled with power, and they began to speak with. Notice he didn't say unknown. It says other, other than the one that they grew up with. Are we together? Because the Holy Spirit gave them the ability to do that. But that's the least. Um, as they, as the Spirit gave them what utterance they were filled with the Holy Ghost. Filled with power. And watch me, watch it. Did I say he's the come? What did he come to do again? Reap. Yeah, he's the good. Well, watch it. So when, so when he filled the, 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 the disciples, then, then the text says, Brother Peter, hey, 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 now filled with power. And Spirit gave him utterance. He went downstairs 
A large crowd was there from every nation under the sun. He took up his microphone and started to preach in Jesus' name. He preached and preached and preached and preached with power. When he made the altar call, the Bible says 3,000 people gave their heart to the Lord. One sermon. The reaping has begun. The reaping has begun. The last crop God has started the harvesting. Are you with me? This is why I brought you out here. Every angle I look in the Bible, I'm coming up with the same thing. Jesus is almost here. Even here, what it says on the day of Pentecost, the first reaping of the last crop. Which tells me this campaign may be, you know what this campaign is? That this campaign feels like, you know when the crop is over and you go through and try to pick up this. <laughs> Glean the corners. Hey, hey, the crop is reaping is over. Re hey, hey, if you don't know anything about agriculture, let me tell you. Reaping is over. Hey, I spent half of my life in St. Elizabeth. I have a lot of friends who understand this. So I know a little bit about farming. Reaping is over. Is the church with me? Reaping is over. Any minute now, God will come pick up the last crop. And if you know anything about agriculture, when we finish reap, we burn the field. I said, when we finish reap, we burn the field and get it ready for another year's season of planting. When God finish with you and take up the last of us, it will burn planet Earth. So as you sit in your seat, I'm here to tell you, you are on extra time. The reaping is over. That's what Pentecost is about. It's not about speaking in tongues. No, 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 no. It's about God harvesting these people. The reaping is over. So those of you, I don't want to give my heart to love. God, I don't marry us yet. Stay there. I can't, I can't give my heart to the Lord because of my job. Will you stay with the job? I can't surrender to God because, because anything you put before God, you stay there. You understand why I'm a troubled preacher? Because I know these things. And when you know these things, it's like fire shut up in your bones. You have to tell somebody. If they don't want to hear, that's their business. But my job is to wake the town and tell the people, reaping is over. It's time to come home. We're just gleaning the edges, picking up the little what left. That's what we're doing. Picking up the little what left. So if you don't want, when I call you to give your heart to the Lord, brethren, it's because I know any moment now. So in the name of Jesus, come. Come with your family. Come with your husband. Come with your wife. Come with your children. Come. And if they don't want to come, you leave them and come. Are you hearing me? Yeah, leave it. Mrs. Lot, Mrs. Lot died on the way out. Because everybody has to learn to trust God by himself. Are you with me? Esau and Jacob, our twin brother, one save, one last. You come. Save your soul. Uh, 
I have more to say, but I will leave it there. I'll leave it there. Um, I'll leave it there. I want to pray for somebody who wants to go home with the Lord. Somebody who is a preacher. There's a whole lot of stuff in my way. And if I follow them, I would never make it to the kingdom. But tonight, I want you to pray for me. Because in the name of Jesus, I'm going to make it home. Before the field is burnt, I want to be gathered in the kingdom of God. If that describes you, just raise your hand. Say, preacher, pray for this whole soul. Pray for this whole soul. Pray for this whole soul. Amen. Pray for this soul. I want to make it in the kingdom. Can I invite you to come? Can I invite you to come? Come, 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 come. I've wandered far away. Come, come. Lord, there's a whole lot of stuff in my life. If I follow them, I will not make it to the kingdom. But tonight, God bless you. 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 God. Where's my praise and worship team? They abandoned me. God bless you. God bless you. Coming home. Come sing that song.